using SimGrep and Jenkins for static code analysis. SimGrep is a fast, open source static analysis tool that you can use to find bugs and enforce standards at all points during your software development lifecycle. When SimGrep analyzes your code, it all stays local to that computer, meaning your code never leaves your machine. SimGrep also gives you the ability to write custom rules that you can use to analyze your code. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.2. .2. When this controller was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. Attached to this controller, I have an agent. It's a CentOS-based agent, and on that agent, I have Docker installed. Here we are at the SimGrep site. It's at simgrep.dev. And you can go through and see different things along the header, rules, playground, app, and docs. Let's go ahead and go over to the docs specifically for getting started. Now, since we're going to be running this inside of Jenkins, we're going to look at a different way to run it in just a couple of minutes. But if you're wanting to run it locally before you even commit your code, you can install the simgrep binary. If you're on Mac OS, you can just simply do a brew install simgrep, or you can install it via pip. When you actually run SimGrep, depending on what happens when the binary runs, will give you a different exit code. And all the exit codes are defined under CLI reference. And if it was successful, we'll get a zero, just as you would expect. Sometimes you'll get a one that it ran successfully and found issues, and a number of other exit codes that you could test for as you are going through and running SimGrep. But since we're focused on actually running SimGrep inside of Jenkins, let's take a look at the documentation for SimGrep CI. Now, SimGrep CI, also known as SimGrep Action, is a specialized Docker image. That's the reason why we have an agent that has Docker installed on it. There is no standalone binary for the SimGrep agent binary. You have to use the container image. Now, SimGrep gives us an example of how to run SimGrep agent along with Jenkins. And let's take a look at that real quick. What we have here is Jenkins using Kubernetes and then running the container there. You can set environment variables and then run the command to run SimGrep agent. And it's simply SimGrep agent. But in this video, we don't have Kubernetes. All we have is Docker. So I want to show you how to run this with just Docker. So in the case of Jenkins, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing Docker run. We're going to mount in a volume, and it's going to be mounted to the slash source directory within the container. And this PWD will be the workspace of the job as it's running. We mount up a work dir, and then finally we pull in the image and say simgrep agent, and then we're going to be passing in some parameters to it. Our parameters are going to be a little bit different than this, but we'll say dash dash config. And in this case, you could say auto, and that would tell the SimGrep agent, based on the code, go figure out what rules to run. We're going to be very specific in which rules that we want to run. Now, what are these rules? If you go ahead and go back up to the top bar, you're going to see a rules tab. And in our case, since we're going to be running with Jenkins, we obviously will be using, or maybe not so obviously, we're going to be using the CI rule set. And if we click into the CI rule set, what we're going to see here is that there are 135 rules contained in this rule set, and it will cover numerous languages. It supports Python, Java, JavaScript, and Go. And if we were to scroll through everything, we would see how these are all listed. In case the first page is Go, and we can keep clicking through some more, there's some Javas, there's some Pythons, and then finally there are some Rubies. So by using a rule set, we have these predefined rule sets that we can use. But also remember that we can write our own custom rules. Now, we're not going to be going over how to write custom rules and how to use them. If you're interested in see how to do that, leave a comment down in the video. So let's go take a look at our first repository. What I have here is a fork of the WebGoat repository. Now, WebGoat is a very deliberately insecure application. And what I've done is I forked it and then I created a Jenkins file in the repository. So we could just pull it in and run it like a normal declarative pipeline. So if we take a look at the Jenkins file, let's see what we have here. It's very simple. It's a one-liner. We're saying docker run dash v. We're using the workspace environment variable. It's being mounted into slash source. We're setting our work dir. We pull in the image. 
we say simgrep agent, and then we're doing dash dash config p slash i, which is this rule set, the CI rule set. So let's go over here and grab our link. Let me go back to here. And I need to filter it down to Jenkins file and do that. And let's grab our link. Let's go back over to our controller. We're going to say new item. We're going to call this web goat pipeline. Click OK. We're going to change this to from SCM, get URL. We are on the Jenkins file branch because that is the branch that I made in my repository. And the name of the Jenkins file is Jenkins file. OK, let's go ahead and click on save and click on build now. Now this will take a few minutes to run, so I'm going to fast forward it and then we'll take a look at the results. Okay, our job is completed, and we can see here at the very bottom, the script returned an exit code one. Well, if we go back to our example of our exit codes, we can see that one, simgrep ran successfully, meaning simgrep ran, but it found issues and the error flag was set. So this is the error code that we got. But if we go back and take a look here, let's go back to the top of the run and see everything that happened. Going way back up the screen here. So here we go. All right, so what we have here is we see our Docker run, and we can see the output here. The version of SimGrep is 070, which at the time of recording is the most recent release. And then we're doing a full scan we're running in environment git. Again, I'll leave that up to you to understand what environment is. And then manage, not logged in. Now manage is an integration with the service they provide. We're just running it completely standalone, completely optional. We're setting up the agent configuration, and this agent is in the context of simgrep. So we're saying using simgrep rules from PCI. So we have this one, then we're using Default path ignore rules for common tests and dependency directories. It found 1,023 files to be scanned. It skipped 83 based on path ignore rules. So therefore, we're looking for issues in 940 files. After the time of completion, we found 22 errors. Then let's scroll down and just take a look at this first one here. We can see that it gives us the rule that failed the file that it failed in, and the line number. And not just the, it's not just the line number, it gives us the whole context of the code for that method. And then it gives us the full description of the problem as it's declared problems. Detected a method annotated with request mapping that does not specify the HTTP method. And it goes on through this and says to mitigate add the method field and specify the HTTP method, such as request method post. So it found something that it believes is an error and it's giving you a possible resolution. Now what I want to do is I want to add in a couple more rule sets. So I'm gonna go back over to my repository. I'm gonna go down to Jenkins file. I'm going to just edit in place here. And the two that I'm going to put in let me copy those over here. So we have security audit and we have secrets. Now, will we find anything different? Let's see. Let's go and click on commit changes. Go back over to our controller and let's run the job again. And now we're back. We can see here that it found an extra item that we didn't see in the first run and it's talking about CSRF is disabled for this configuration. This is a security risk. And if we scroll back up top, let's go back to where it started. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Here we go, here we go. Again, highly insecure application on purpose. We can see here the exact same setup at the beginning, except now we have the three different rule sets. We have CI, security audit, and secrets. Why should you run a static analysis tool like SimGrep on your code? If you were to run SimGrep locally before you even push your code to your source control, you would be able to find 
and fix those changes before they even hit source control. As we saw through our WebGoat example, even if code is pushed into your repository during your CI processes, you can block issues from ever reaching your production environment. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter, at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.